Good morning! This looks to be a pretty gloomy day and it's actually rainy as you notice. Anyway, we are at a food court in Chinatown and we're going to bring you to try some foods here. This is a very old food court. I think one of the oldest to have been built in Chinatown, built in 1978. It's called Hong Lim Market and Food Center. It holds more than 100 stores spanning over two stories, but we're going to try just a few. Because there are just two of us. Anyway, let's head in. We're going to start off with Chakwe Diao. Here we are, the famous Outram Parks are right here and you can already see a queue. It's barely past 8 a.m. Anyway, a little bit of history on this stall. It is held by 70-year-old Mr. Ng Chin Chai. And the history to Outram Park Chai Kway is a rather long one. We started with Mr. Ng's father, who started to hawk the Chai Kway in 1939 in Tanjung Paga. And he eventually moved to Outram Park in 1973 before moving to Hong Lim Food Market. They are very well known for their fried Kway Teow Mee. And there's basically only one choice. You don't have to choose any other variations. It all comes with Kway Teow Mee. And they have received a Michelin Big Gourmet since 2018. The way Mr. Ng fries his Kway Teow is really unique and I'm also a little bit concerned because he doesn't fry it plate by plate, he fries it by batch. And it's a really no frills kind of Chai Kway Teow. It looks so simple, yeah, it looks very delicious. The aroma of the Chai Kway Teow is just wafting in the air. Look at this glorious plate of Chai Kway Teow. Oh, and it does smell pretty fragrant. It's actually fried relatively wet, very similar to Penang Chai Kway Teow in terms of the wetness. A little bit moist. We ordered a large one which is $5.56. It comes with fried noodles along with fried Kway Teow. We've got bean sprouts, fish cake. Quite a generous serving of pork lard. And they're also blood cockles but I can't seem to find them at the moment. Anyway, we have let it cool for a few minutes. Let us just dive in. very well. You could taste a moderate amount of wok here. Not really strong but it's definitely there. The spiciness hits you. It's a throaty spiciness. I really like it. The crater is a little bit more broken up than I would have liked but it's very nice in flavours. You could taste very clearly. The soy sauce mixture, maybe with some fish sauce, is savoury but the main profile there is sweetness. It doesn't overpower the entire dish. Mm. And the wok I think Mr. Ng leans on the borderline of a delicate, elusive wok without it being overly smoky. A lighter wok hay, but it's obviously that it's very present. You cannot deny the fact that there is wok hay in this plate of chakwe teow. And I'm actually very surprised because generally for you to really control the wok of a chakwe teow, you will want to fry plate by plate. But this is not really well. The color is very 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 explosive. This really reminds me of Kinzai. It's very much like Kinzai Chao Wei in KL with more sweetness. Kinzai is more savory. I think the magic of this dish is that it doesn't feel moist. It looks moist but the moisture is like just nice. It's not too dry, it's not wet at all. I think it's due to the eggs. It was really quite a bit of it. I don't think the ratio is one egg per Chao Wei It's probably slightly more. The pita is soft, it's smooth, it's velvety, coated by a layer of moist eggs. This is a good chai this is a very good chai If it had more wok it would be like perfect. But it has wok it's, it's just that I would have liked it to be a little bit more. But this is very good. Yeah, the cockles are fresh. That pork lard, pork lard is good. Pork lard is very nice. Guys, you better come on. This is one of the proper big Roman spots. This is good. Alright guys, we are now heading to have some laksa. At this store called famous Sungai Road Trisho Laksa. It is located right in front. This stall is held by Mr. Daniel Su, who has been dishing up laksa for more than 20 years. Now, I'll be honest, my exposure to Singapore laksa is like bare minimum. I probably had it once or twice in the past decade. <laughs> so I can't really remember what Singapore laksa tastes like. And we have decided to try this stall because they are a really famous stall in Hong Kong market. And they have also gotten a Michelin Big Gourmet since 2016. 
and they have retained their Bikoman to date. Look at this hearty bowl of laksa. You can see up top there's tender looking chicken and prawns, blood cockles and some fish slices. And in the middle, it's what we call the laksa noodles. This is thinner than what I'm accustomed to. Normally the ones in Malaysia, the laksa noodles are sort of thicker. And we've got in a spoon, down kesom, along with some sambal. Since I only have one spoon, so I guess I'm gonna mix all the sambal and the down kesom in and have it full flavoured. Let's go. Oh look at that sambal mixing and it's turning a little bit redder than the noodles. I didn't know there were so much noodles. They are starting to reveal themselves now. Anyway, so to every noodle. <laughs> it, it's very different from what I was expecting. Uh, coming from Malaysia. I was expecting a rich gravy with a lot of coconut milk flavour but this is not. It's actually a lighter base broth. It starts off with a spicy kick. Like a throaty spiciness, moderately spicy and then you get the flavour of the coconut milk. It sort of lies at the back like a backdrop. It's an undertone of flavour. It's there, it's very present and there's a sweetness in the broth. You can actually taste the broth's flavour, I will call it like a seafood based sweetness. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, the owner, Mr. Daniel, he uses all these like dried scallops, dried shrimps, dried oysters to boil up this broth and you can definitely taste it. I think it's very delicate, it's very surprising. Mm. 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 Noodles are cooked really well. They are snappy, not overcooked. And the amazing thing is the broth goes up with the noodles, it's like all the broth is just clinging onto the sides of the noodles. And I love how they sort of cut the laksa noodles into like shorter strands. So all you need is literally a spoon and it comes out like this. See this? Mm. And I just tasted a blood cockle there. Really nice iron flavour, very very fresh. And if you manage to grab a little bit of that down kesom, we call the laksa leaf. You get that herbaceous flavour, a little bit minty and that brings it to the next level. Mm. Chicken is tender, it's bitey, it's not mushy and it has its own chicken flavour. This is in Singapore, just so good. Mm. I can finish the whole bowl, inclusive of all the broth. Because it's not overly rich, it's not quite, that's a key point in laksas. Very different from what we would expect at Malaysians. We would expect a rich, creamy, heavy laksa. This is not. This is a delicate bowl. Light, but very flavorful. It's another variant. Both of them are good in their own right. But if you're a laksa lover, you must try this. This is really nice. Finally, it's my turn. This fruit just mi siam. It's another signature from Mr. Daniel. It's created by him. His version of mi siam. It's very different with Malaysian mi siam because normally we have it in dry version and this is the soup version. So you can see the ingredient roughly same as the laksa. Only the extra one is the egg, lime and some spring onion. Let's start with the broth. interesting broth because it's between the broth and fruit juice some fragrance from the peanut I would say this broth is very fun and very suitable to everyone as long as you can take some acidity let's add in the lime mix with the sambal and try the noodle The mabu chili is nappy and it sort of like soak up the soup one bite. You can taste the noodle and the soup together. It's very savable. Let's try with the egg. Mm. The yolk is very creamy, very surprising. Actually, overall, the ingredient is very fresh and very good prepared. Mmm, very slurpable dish. I actually think it is a lot more refreshing than the traditional medium that uses tamarind. So try this out guys. Really, highly recommend it.
Dinar. That was a great, great view. Chakwe Tiao, Laksa, and Mi Siam. All right, let us talk about Outram Park Chakwe Tiao first. Absolutely delicious, delicious Chakwe Tiao. Beautiful balancing flavors, throaty spiciness, moderately sweet, and rather savory soy sauce mixture. Woke is kind of moderate. Personally, I would have liked it if it was a notch higher in the department. Noodles are fried soft and velvety, oddly slivered in a very, very good way. And the blood pockets are very fresh and the pork luck, fragrance and exclusive. But I think the magic comes in the form of their fluffy eggs that semi coats the noodles. It's fried moist, and perhaps that is where the moisture comes from. It elevates this chakwita to a slurpable status mm. where you inhale it bite after bite by swiping it off the plate. And when it all comes together, it forms a mouth-watering, delicious and extremely exciting plate of chakwita. And with that being said, Ultram Park Chakwita scores a half a plate on the gourmet plate, which means it is some high-quality chakwita right there. Absolutely recommended. You gotta try lah if you're in Singapore, you wanna try out what Singapore chakwita is about. Visit Outram Park Chakwe Tiao located in Hong Lim Food Center. It's absolutely worth it. I would suggest that you come early, lah, like before 8, because mm. the queue will be insane. When we came before 8, the wait is not that long, it's about 20 minutes. Yep. Next up, the famous Sungai Road Chai Shou Laksa. Delicate, relatively light broth laksa that's surprisingly flavorful while not being cloyed and not overly rich. And the noodles are cooked just right with a light snap and bounce and they are cut into spoonful sizes so it allows you to slurp it up together with that delicious broth. And the ingredients are fresh and carry their own natural flavor. Okay, that's it. I gotta mention specifically, this is not the type of laksa that will blow your mind. It is instead more like a heartwarming bowl of laksa. Mm -hmm. but as you progress bite after bite, it gets more and more addictive because you start tasting the depth in their broth. The broth is very delicate and it's so slurpable that before you know it, you have finished up the entire bowl. Yep. Yeah, so it's a really good bowl of laksa, just that not the super punchy, rich, creamy type that most Malaysians will be expecting. For the Misa, I would say it's more like a kid friendly dish. The balance of the fruity spiciness, nuttiness, and fruity acidity makes it a refreshing dish. And the vermicelli is maybe a little bit thicker than your usual vermicelli, so it stays firm throughout the entire meal and it has a very nice snap. But surprisingly, it still allows the broth to coat it, so it's very suitable. Every mouthful of vermicelli, you get all that broth along with it. Yeah. However, probably because the broth lacks a bit of depth compared to their laksa broth, so it's more simple, straightforward flavors. So as you progress through the bowl, it tends to lean one note. It doesn't mean it's bad. I think the laksa is more refined in a way. Yeah, this is more simple tasting. Overall, the laksa is a stunner and the misiam is unique. And with that said, this spot scores a half a plate on the gourmet plate, which means it is some really high quality laksa right there with a unique misiam. Again, absolutely recommended if you're in Hongling Market. Or even if you are a person who just likes laksa in general, you must try this spot out. Okay, a caveat uh, because we are not regulars, we don't eat here every day, so I don't know if they are consistent or not. But if they are as good as they are today, every single day, then yes, both stalls are very, very good hawker food stalls and totally worthy of their Michelin Big Roman. And to the fellow Singaporeans who are watching this food vlog, leave a comment down below to let us know what is your favorite laksa and chakwe tiao spot. Also, let us know what are your favorite stalls that you would like us to try in Hong Lim Food Center. We will definitely be back to this food center. Hope you have enjoyed this food vlog. If you did, do consider giving us a thumbs up. If you have yet to subscribe, do consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell button. Till we again next week in Singapore. Yeah. Bye bye. Go